Alrighty. So yeah, within your pack, you should have a toolkit, and then you should also have this kind of filament holder, and there should be three pieces to it. You're gonna have two sides, like so, and then you'll have one bottom piece. Okay. Did you find those? I got them. All right. Okay, so for this piece here, what we're going to do is I like to take it, and you can kind of put it right here next to the holes, and then you're just going to slide it up until that nut falls into place in between that spacing. Okay, let's see here. And so the best way to really do that is kind of have the nut all the way on the outside of the bolt, and then just kind of slide it up and let the nut fall into place. So like I kind of have it flat like this, and then I kind of like tilt it up to an angle until I get it to slide through. And then you tighten the bolt from the outside, and you should be good. So the nut is gonna be on the inside, and the bolt head should be on the outside, like that. Okay, I'm working on it right now. Awesome, sounds good. So for this training, yeah, we're gonna go a little bit over the process of 3D printing. So I'm gonna like reiterate it for you and kind of just, we'll collectively go back over it. And then we'll talk about troubleshooting issues and specifically setting up our A5 print. Okay, cool. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of my spool holder together here. All right, and I'm going to set that aside, and then I'm going to talk about a little bit about the first steps of the process. So the first step that we have is the design or making things. And as you had just said, you kind of stated the fact that you use Tinkercad in order to kind of modify objects, right? Right. Okay, so that's a great program to use, but I do like Onshape just because it has so many more actions that you can kind of use. And since you've kind of had a little bit of experience with 3D modeling and such, that I feel like you would have a better introduction to 3D modeling for your students if you kind of got used to one of those programs. And I think Tinkercad, depending upon what your grade level is, would be a great introduction, and then Onshape is a great way to step forward. Okay, we have fifth and sixth graders. Okay, yeah, so you can definitely start with Tinkercad, and that's something that you can kind of go over with them, of how you manipulate shapes and turn them into objects. And then you can export as an STL. So you do know the file types are STL and G code that we're going to use for the printer. Correct. Awesome. So the other kind of programs that I like, I like Fusion 360 because it's a lot like Autodesk Inventor, but that is a much more robust program and it's almost used by professionals. So if you kind of want to take that step towards it, I think it's an awesome modeling program. It would be something great to kind of make the size on. So the dot STL is actually a stereo, stereo lithography type of file. And what that means is it's basically a whole bunch of triangles that interconnect by edges and vertices to make up that 3D object that you have. And those are also relevant in something called a dot OBJ. And they use the same type of foil file format and they can be opened in both types of slicers. Okay, so that kind of load thing, that, um, excuse me, that object or that 3D model design that you create within Tinkercad and Onshape is what you'll port into Cura. And you've had experience a little bit with that, but I think we just need to kind of change some of the settings around to kind of get it set up for how we like to print along with our filament. Okay. Um, so did you get your spool holder together? Yeah, uh, one side of it I was missing a... Uh... The, the other screw or the nut that goes into it, is there? The bolt and screw that were in it? Was yeah. it not already inside it? No, there was only uh, one side that had one. The other side, uh, see, it doesn't have it. Oh, no. Uh, okay, maybe check the bag that it came in. It's possible that it came unscrewed and it fell out. Um, if not, we can always send you the replacement hardware if you like, or you can just simply snap them together as is. And then if you grab the piece that should sit in between them, seems that I've lost it. 
right here, like this. Let me swap here. So it's like this nut and bolt deal. Okay, that bar, okay. Yeah, if you use that bar and you kind of hold them together and insert them and then put, sorry for the loud noise, put the filament through and then place that bar in the middle of the filament here, then it should help keep them and stay together. And so your filament holder should work by itself by kind of doing that. Okay. Okay, I got you. Let me let me find my. That's funny. You picked yellow, and I picked yellow. That's what I laid on my <laughs> desk. Well, awesome. We'll be right in line with each other then. <laughs> let me get it going. Here. All right. So we kind of talked about the first design process, and now we're going to use an STL file generated from these objects that we created in that space. And the next part we're going to do is going to be slicing or using a slicer to create G-code, which the printer runs off of. And so that's the step where we go through Cura. Cura is going to be our slicer. And like you said, you have 15.04.06 installed. So we'll kind of just jump into that once you grab your filament holder. OK, now the only thing I wondered is, since I already have that downloaded, Yeah. Uh, um, the the other printer that I have is a is a mono price and it, so it has a little bit bigger of a bed. So will it throw that off when the program knows because it knows, you know, the bed size for my mono price yeah. printer. So what we're is going there to, a way to switch yeah. yeah, we're gonna actually switch between printers. So we're going to add a new printer and settings for your Kira device. So it'll okay. be completely different profiles, and you should be good to swap between either or. So if you're printing on your other printer, you can select that value. Or if you're printing on our NWA 3D A5s, you can select that. So there'll be two separate things, and it should go really well. OK. All right, so I'm going to share my screen with you so we can kind of go over the Kira settings. And I'll take you step by step through that. So if you want to go ahead and pull up Kira with me, and if you can't quite get me off the screen because I probably enlarged it all the way, then you can choose to, up in the top left, there should be a selection to kind of minimize max, max screen. Uh, let's it might be in the top see. bar here that kind of comes down. Okay, I see one says view options. Yeah. Okay, I, uh, so I can click like what, original size? Right, you should be able to minimize it in that way, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Awesome. That way we can kind of share screens and go over it together. So what I want you to do is in the top left of the Cura window, I'm going to select machine and then I'm going to select add new machine. And it's going to pop up this little configuration wizard. Okay, so do I need to open up like my cure that I already have downloaded right now? Yeah, go ahead so we can step through it together. So okay. you can open your regular cure like you would for your other printer. Okay, give me one second here. Yeah, sure, no problem. Okay, get all these. Windows put together here. Okay, so one more time. Where'd you tell me to yeah, go? Sure so in the top left of the screen for Kira, let me step back for you one sec. It's gonna say machine right up here in the toolbar. Okay. And then scroll down to add new machine. Okay. And go ahead and click on that, and it should close that window and create a configuration wizard. It did. Okay, so now we're going to click next on add new machine, and we're going to choose okay. other. Uh, okay. Click next, and then we're going to select something called Mindle, and Mindle is the operating system for our A5 printers. So that's M-E-N-D-E-L, and it's kind of just a little bit above the middle. Okay, got it. And then click next and finish. Okay. 
Okay. All right, so the next section we're gonna go over is all of the settings for our specific kind of like nozzle size and how we wanna print and the temperature and that sort of thing that's in the left-hand panel. So the first one that we're kind of gonna go over is the layer height. And layer height is going to be anywhere from 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 millimeters in size. And depending upon which value you select, 0 0.3 is going to be a lower quality print, but faster, and 0 0.1 is going to be a high quality, but take longer. So for this demonstration, we're just gonna keep it at 0 0.2. All right, next we're gonna have the shell thickness, and shell thickness stands for the outside of a model's um, shape. So what it is is the walls that it has are going to be a total of whatever millimeter you selected in this value. And so what we're going to do is we want it to be a, sim a multiple of the nozzle size that we have for our printers. So we're gonna actually change it to 0 0.8. All right, and then next up, we're gonna have the bottom and top thickness. And that's going to be the exact same type of thing just for the bottom and top layers of your model. And so for that case, we also want it a multiple or the same as the shell thickness to keep it an accurate model all around. So let's change that to 0 0.8 as well. And if you have any questions at any point in time during this, just stop me and ask me. I am more than happy to help you and try and communicate through this. Okay. All right, next up we have fill density percentage. And what that means is there's going to be a certain amount of fill that's created for your model. So 100% fill would mean that the, each layer is completely laid out of plastic. But that's gonna take a lot of plastic and a lot of time. So what we recommend is anywhere from five to 25% of fill will usually make a strong and durable model. So five is gonna be a little bit weaker, and 25 is going to be a quite a durable and strong model that you can usually hold well. So I'm going to change this to actually 5%, and that's just so that our print that we create will print a lot quicker than normal. So this is another determinant of time. All right, then we have print speed. In print speed, for this case, we wanna leave it at 50 millimeters per second because we feel like the A5 printers that we have operate the best at that speed. Now they can go up to 60 millimeters per second, but what tends to happen is it gets a little bit sloppy and quality goes down in our prints. So we like 50 millimeters to be the base. Now you can increase or decrease the speed based upon if you wanted to print slower and make sure that everything's really nice, but I wouldn't recommend going any lower than 25 millimeters per second. Okay. Next up, we're going to have printing temperature. And for this case, we're gonna change this value to 220 degrees Celsius. The reason for that is that most PLA is actually printed at 210, but the PLA we ship out has a special composite within it that makes it much more flexible. And since it is so flexible, it takes a little bit more heat to, in order to or liquefy it. So we're gonna change that to 220 degrees Celsius. Next, we have the bed temperature, and we don't have a heated bed on our A5 printers, so we can change that value to zero. Next up is the support type, and what supports do is if you have a model that has an area that's far above the code plate, say you have a section of your model here, and then there's an arm for your model that's kind of sitting here in midair. What it does is it generates this area in between and it creates something for that future layer to lay upon. And so the use of that is creating a structural model that supports what is going to be our final model. And it's much easier to break off and it's not quite as built. And so for the sake of kind of the initial instruction for this, we like to change it to everywhere just to make sure that our model prints off well and it does have support wherever it needs it. Okay. Now, the only thing I, I wondered is because I, I'm only used to more working the ones that have a, uh, a heated bed, and I see people online that don't have heated beds. Uh, on this particular model, do you have to put, like, blue painter's tape or, like, like uh, 
hairspray or glue stick or something like that on there to get things to stick okay. So do you have this on your model? And it it, says it's on there. Okay, no. You don't have to add any of the patterns tape. You don't have to add any hairspray and don't do any glue. Those things are not recommended. The only thing we would recommend is if you did have this flat area like this, you wouldn't want to put painter's tape on it. Painter's tape actually works great for this type of thing. But we ship out with our printers now something called lock build. And lock build actually provides a very microscopic surface that helps to adhere the plastic to it. And so you shouldn't have to add anything to this and it should stick well to this build surface as is. Oh, perfect. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. And so regarding that lock build, one thing that we do say is that generally when you're leveling a build plate, you want to use the thickness of one sheet of paper. But since the lock build sticks so well, we actually change it to the size of a paper fold and a half. And that's about 200 microns or 0.2 millimeters. But we'll go over that whenever we're leveling the build plate. All right, so next up here in the Kira settings, we're gonna have a platform adhesion type. And so this is something that can help from your model warping. So if you have a large flat model on the build surface and it continuously keeps pulling up in this kind of form on the edges, either change your leveling and try and make it much more accurate, or you can choose to create a platform adhesion type. And what this will do is it almost creates a suction cup on either side of your model in order to keep those sides closer to the build plate and from pulling up. For this case, we're just going to select none because typically it creates a lot of plastic on the side and it takes a lot more time in order to do so. All right, so next up we're gonna have diameter of our filament. And so our filament is actually 1.75. And you can read that on the sticker on the side of the filament. Also, on the side of that sticker, it should say PLA as the type of plastic. We're going to leave our flow percentage at 100. Now, finally, we have our nozzle size. And for the A5 printers, we have a 0 0.4 nozzle. And hopefully when you change the 0 0.4, it should make everything nice and white. And it had the shell thickness as a funny yellow color because it was unsure. And basically what it meant is that it wasn't a multiple of our nozzle. And that's what it was upset about. So you have any questions about kind of the things that we went over or do you feel all right? Uh, good. Good so far. That's uh, usually, you know, the basic stuff that I, you know, play around with and, and yeah. stuff. Uh, now, the only, uh, only thing I did wonder for this one, what, uh, for the type of nozzle that it has on it, will it do things other than PLA or is that the only type of filament that it'll use? So it, it can do things other than PLA, uh, just as long as it's going to be a 1.75 millimeter filament, you can also use something called TPU. But TPU, we recommend actually creating a new piece for your extruder, and you can 3D print it and everything. Um, but this piece doesn't work all that great for TPU. Um, so what we recommend doing is actually 3D printing a new one of these and making a small modification in order to print that flexible material. Okay, what about, I, I saw online where it said it, it is it possible that it'll do um, wood fill? So it is possible that you can do wood fill, but that would require changing the size of the nozzle on the printer. And so that would just be ordering a small nozzle for us for, I believe they're around just $15. Okay, is that a, is that a real headache to have to install that? Or is it as simple as unscrew the old one and screw the new one on? It's really quite that simple. All that you would need to do is unscrew this shield fan right here, and then you would move this up and then unscrew the nozzle and then screw the new one on. 
And so that's something that we could do either with you or with your students on another video conference call as a follow-up. Okay, good. Because I've been looking into, you know, wanting to try to print some other stuff because I've just used PLA and I'd seen people using, uh, especially that, that wood fill and like, you know, putting varnish on it and staining and stuff. It looked really cool. But that's what everybody was like, well, you're going to want to get a different nozzle because they said it caused a lot of jams and, yeah, you know, some different issues. If you don't enlarge the nozzle size for it. And usually whenever you print something that what we would call that wood infill is actually a composite. And that's a composite type of, uh, you know, filament that we use we do recommend upgrading your nozzle size and also making one, a dedicated printer to that because we don't want to try and flip back and forth between the two types of filaments. It makes it a lot harder to do, so. Right, okay, good deal. All right, so finally, we just need to change the machine settings. So if you are to click up here again in the top toolbar and click machine and then go to machine settings, should pull up a little window like this. Machine setting. Yep. It's okay. Okay, I got it. And so this is where we're gonna change the size of the build plate. And so this first maximum width is going to be 125. And that's right at about five inches. And then we're gonna have 150 on the depth, which is right about at six. And then the maximum height is going to be 100 millimeters or four inches. All right, and so finally for this menu, we're going to unclick this heated bed option because again, we don't have a heated bed on the A5. And then finally, Depending on how you feel, you can change the name of the machine, which I would recommend, seeing as you have a secondary printer. And I would change the name to WA, NWA 3D A5. Okay, let's see, Lord. Let's see that, okay, change machine name, okay. And that's a NWA 3D A5. A5, okay, got it. And then you'll click okay. And then okay one more time on the machine setting screen. And it should change the area of your build plate. Okay, it did. Awesome, so that is all the settings that we required to change in Cura to set up our printers. So that was going to be the kind of first initial setup for slicing in Gco. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to guide you through the process, process of actually setting up a file within Cura. All right, so with your kit, there should have been a micro SD card much like this, and it's actually probably in a USB box. All right, let's see here. Yeah, I got it. The one that kind of looks like a little flash drive. Yes, exactly. And there should be okay, a I got it. SD card within it. There is. Sweet. And so if you could plug that into your computer. Give me just one second. I need to grab a different adapter for my SD card. Okay. Sorry about that. That's all right. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my SD card so I can follow you through with the steps. All right, so here in the top left of the window, you should see a little kind of file right here. 
and it's going to say load. Okay. I want you to go ahead and click on that and then navigate to your SD card. And so that's going to be titled NWA 3D. Okay, mine just says removable disk drive D, but... <laughs> well, we better check on that next time. Then. But That'll hit. So is there files inside of it that says Cura STL files and test prints? There is. Excellent. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into the STL files folder. And so remember, after we created a design or made a model, what we did was exported it as an STL file, and now we're going to slice it in our slicer. And so you're welcome to pick either or. Um, would you rather do the keychain or the six-sided dice? Uh, how about the dice? All right, sounds good. And if we double click on that, it should pull it up inside of our build area. It did. Awesome. So now the first kind of things that we can do is we can move the cameras around by holding down the right mouse button and we can zoom in and out by uh, actually using the scroll wheel on your mouse. So a couple other things that we can do is just by left clicking and touching the model, we can move it around. And then if the model is grayed out like it is right now, it means that the printer will not actually print this object and it can't slice the code. So we would have to make it until it's yellow and that means it's good. And so we can create multiple objects within Cura if we would like. To do that, you would right click on this object and then you'd click multiply. It asks for the number of copies and I'm just going to create one and now I have two of the same object. And then you can orient that on the build plate as you like. For this demonstration, I'm simply just going to use one. So in order to get rid of this, I'm going to right click on one of the objects and click delete. There's also a wonderful function called center on platform in Cura. And if you right click and click center on platform, it'll plop it right in the middle for us again. All right. Now we have a couple, once you click on an object, we'll have a couple options here in the bottom left of the window, and that's going to be rotate, scale, and mirror. Rotate is going to allow us to grab either of the three axes it sits on and rotate it in that direction. And it does have snapping points and grids so that it goes from either zero to 15. Next, we're going to have scale. And we can either use the uniform scale function where it scales it and it keeps it proportional, or you can unselect, unselect that value and create it smaller, taller, or wider as you please. For this demonstration, we're going to leave it at the same regular scale. There's also a function within there that you can scale to max, which will completely max the object in the build space provided. Finally, we're going to have mirror, and mirror is going to flip it on a certain axis. Depending upon which one you select, you'll see your object be manipulated as such. Finally, we're going to have what I like a whole bunch, and it's called view mode. View mode allows us to see quite a few things which between normal, overhang, x-ray, and layers. And what I like the most about this is the layer function. What this does is it generates a profile of all of the layers the printer will go through in order to create your object. And by using the slider on the right hand side, we can scroll through this object's layers and files. So I'm kind of just sitting here around 50 at the layer height. And then if I were to come over here and change the fill density on this object, it'll actually change the inside of it for us. So I'm gonna change that to 10%. Notice that there's now more of an infill of the object. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that back to 5%, just for simplicity's sake. 
And that's a little bit about the window that we have within Kira. So now, all we would have to do that we have our object manipulated and as we like it, is over here in the top left, it says toolpath to SD for myself. If you don't see that, you can also go to the top of the toolbar and click file and save as and select your path. So I'm going to go ahead and click toolpath to SD. Well, mine says failed to save file. So maybe <laughs> in this case, I should choose file and go to save G code because we want to export it as a G code file, not as a model. So save G code. And then I'm going to go into my NWA 3D SD card. And then I'm going to just click save. Seems that it doesn't want to be inserted and it's mad at me. So I'm going to reinsert it. Well, okay, my, mine, mine worked fine. Let me reload mine with this. Yeah, that's the only thing I'm surprised it wasn't mine that messed up. See, because I, I don't, uh, I pretty much use my iPad for everything, and so yeah. I don't really have my own personal computer anymore. So this is one for working at the school district that they give all the teachers. But then if you ever leave the school district, you have to turn it back. Right. Um, but it's going to be a pain if I ever leave because I, I've been there for it's seven years now, and so I've got so much stuff on here <laughs> but the only problem is it's exactly but it's like everything else with technology you know it's getting so much stuff on there and it's getting older and so some of these newer 3d printing programs it runs them real slow or there was one i can't remember i tried to download and it wouldn't even let it download because the computer didn't even have the right you know necessities on there to even let it work so so one of these days, I'm going to have to break down and buy a different computer, I guess. Okay, so my computer doesn't want to save my file today. But for the essence of this, as long as you're working, then we're good. So I think what it is, is it's this SD adapter that I grabbed. It's actually locked from myself, and I can't unlock it there. So now that we <laughs> exported our file in our G code, what we're going to do next is we're completely done with Cura in the computer side of things. So next we would go move on and transfer the file. So we did the first step, we designed or made it, and then we loaded it into a slicer and turned it into G code. Now you can take the USB out of your computer or eject it preferably to make sure it's saved correctly. And then you're going to take the SD card out of your USB. And that SD card is going to go into our printer. And so this is the third step of transferring. And during this transfer, I'm going to go ahead and place it in the SD port on our printer, which is directly below our button. So I'm going to take that small little SD card and I'm going to insert it here. And you should hear a little click for it. Sorry, I could have stopped the screen share there so you could see me a little bit better. I got to say, I'm trying to get mine to, to bigger because I have a hard time seeing it. I didn't know if I could. Yeah, you should be able to re-enlarge it now. There it goes. Okay, I got awesome. it. Uh, okay, right, now so let me find my spot. That's the... A little bit more, and it's right below the button. So right here, and the SD card is going to go into this slot there. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me... My, my den is uh, what was an old two-car garage, and so there's not much lighting, and so I have to rely on a lot of flashlights. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. Okay, I got it. Awesome, sounds good. Okay, so the next part that we're gonna go over is what we would have to do at this point is we transferred the print to the printer, right? Where the file to the printer, and now all we would have to do for the printer, as long as everything was set up, is just click on it and say print from SD and start printing. But since we kind of put your package through shipping and your printer's been jostled around and moved a whole bunch, then 
we're probably going to need to check a couple issues that may happen. And so that would be the final of the design process that we finished. So we went design, slice, transfer, and print, and that's done. Well, what I'm going to go over now is the troubleshooting steps for A5 specifically. And so what we're going to touch on here a little bit is we're going to go over the mechanical errors that can happen. And so the first things that I'm going to do with this is that I'm going to go over, you know, all of the motors. Are the motors plugged in? So we have motor plug-ins here. We have an X, and then we're going to have the X limit switch here. Yeah, those look okay. All right, and then we're going to have the E, or the extruder plug-in, right here in the back. Okay, yeah, it's good. And then we're going to have our Ys down here. Okay, they're good. And then finally, we'll have our Z motor at the very bottom of it. Kind of perpendicular to the Y. Okay, it's good. Sweet. All right, so next thing we might want to check is the belts that we have holding these on. And so these belts are going to be right here on this X axis. Okay. Make sure those are those are on and they're also taut. They're also what? What'd you say taut, one more time? So that they're a little bit tight. We just want to make sure that they're not super loose and they'll effectively move our burner. So okay. we just want to feel the tension on them. And if the tension feels good to you, they should be good. Okay, yeah, as far as I can tell, it feels fine. Sweet. All right, so we kind of just looked over the mechanical errors of it that might happen. And so usually in that case, if your printer's making funny noises or it's acting up in some weird way, or it seems like it won't move front to back or side to side, then check your mechanical errors first. Next, we have leveling the build plate. And that's another type of mechanical error, but we almost put it in a separate category because there's a lot that you have to go over when you're leveling the build plate. For these guys, we do it all manually, and it is pretty easy once you get the hang of it, but it takes a little bit. So what I'm gonna do first is we need to plug in our printers, and then we're going to need to set it to zero, 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 or what we like to call auto home. So go ahead and take your power cord for your printer and plug that guy in. Uh, okay, and uh, is there an on-off switch anywhere, or is it just when you get done with it, you just pull the plug out. And Correct. There is no on off switch and you just pull the plug out. It is our form of fail safe. So if you feel like there's something going wrong with the printer, you want to stop a print immediately or if something's going super bad and you feel like you're having problems, unplug it. So okay. it can be during the middle of a print. It can be just sitting there. It can be at any time at all. And if you come by and unplug it, it's not going to hurt the printer at all but it will stop the print and you will have to restart it. Okay. And every time you unplug the printer, it actually reboots the software that's on it and will completely reset the settings that you have. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to click once on the button we're going to scroll down to setup and click again. And then we're going to scroll down once more and click again on auto home. And this is going to bring us our printer to the very forefront left hand corner, which is considered to be zero, zero, zero for our axis. That work I like what? Yeah, I like watching them, and I I like hearing the the noises. I don't know. <laughs> the words of it. <laughs> All right. It, it's something about it. I don't know. It's like 
mesmerizing or something. I don't know. It really is. So next, the next part that we're going to do is we want to disable our motor. So go ahead and click once on the build platform. We're going to click set up again, and then we're going to click disable motors instead of auto home. So we're going to go set up and then disable motors. Okay. Once it's finished, up. pardon me. Disable motors. Yes. So click on disable motors. Yes. Okay. Okay, and then I can just go back to the home, home screen. Yeah, and then it should just go back to the home screen. So now we, what we want to check is that the build plate will slide forward and back, and that we can move the extruder assembly side to side. Okay, get, give me one second. My 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 little one year old's out here trying to mess with some stuff. Oh, let me let me grab him real Sorry, fast. Okay, it, of course. <laughs> okay, one well, one second. Okay, so he, he gets excited like I do too. He he comes out here, he likes to he knows the printer's doing something, but he's not exactly sure. And so he likes to come out and try to watch it, touch it, and mess with the <laughs> knobs. And That's awesome though. This is something you can train him on in the future. Oh he my my mom already laughs because he's brainwashed to to the spinners that I made and I'll just hold them up in the air and he'll like swat at them like a cat or something and get them spinning and then he likes to stop them and then he can't really start them again unless you pick them up and hold him hold them again for him he you know his hands too well they can't hold it and spin it himself so you got to hold it so he can spin it Is yeah that <laughs> that's good all right uh, so let's go over leveling the build plate here so for this kind of part of it um you are going to need a piece of paper and like I said earlier, we're going to fold that piece of paper in half, hamburger style. If you don't have a piece of paper handy, you should have a pink slip that came with the package, and you can use that. Pink slip? Yeah, there should be a pink piece of paper. Yeah, I didn't see that, but I got a sheet of paper. All right, either one works. Let's see. You take the sheet of paper, fold it hamburger style. And then we should be ready to go for that because we auto homed to make the Z axis at the very bottom. And then now we can move the build plate back and forth in order to level it based upon itself. So we're leveling the Z axis in this sense. Okay, now let me ask you where, like, the, uh, I don't know, a little, uh, you know, paper clip kind of things that hold the bed on there. Yeah. It, uh, okay. Would they ever get in the way? Because like, if I move it, you know, all the way to one end and like where the nozzle head is and I try to move it, it like hits right there on that one. Yeah. So if it, if it kind of is hitting in certain spots, you're welcome to move those any, any place across the bill plate. So you could put it, even put them here on the side if you would like. It just kind of, it's used to keep this lock build um, attached to our base plate. Okay. So you can put them on the side or otherwise if you would like, if that makes you feel more comfortable about it. Okay. Now it, it, I just wanted it was okay to move them around that way and stuff. Oh, yeah. You can move them wherever you would like. Yes. Okay, good. All right. I got my sheet of paper ready. Awesome. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're actually going to slide that piece of paper right under the nozzle. And so if you can't really get it underneath there, you can actually push down on these build plates. And so I'm about to move this printer pretty heavily during this part of the training. Um, I want you to keep yours level and on a flat surface. Uh, I do this just to give you a better demonstration, a little bit more uh, view of what we're kind of going to go over. 
So for this case, you can lift up your printer. And um, what I'm doing here is actually pushing down on the build plate so that I could insert the paper underneath it. And so it is on springs. So if you do need to push down a little bit, you can. So I would just kind of push down a little bit over here on this left hand side and then slide the paper under. So the next thing that we're going to look for is we're going to look for the small leveling nuts that are underneath our build plate. And for that case, the first one that we're going to work with is going to be right here. And so make sure to keep yours level on the surface, but we're looking for this right here. Okay, hold on. Let me scoop my bed closer to me here. Let's see. And so if you pull the bed out towards the front of the printer, then you should be able to reach it much better. Yeah, and it'll be the one on the left-hand side then? Yes, sir. Okay, I see it. All right. So what we're going to do with those is we're going to use those to level the build plate. So what I like to say is we clock up and count down. So if you go clockwise, it's going to move the build plate up. And if you go counterclockwise, it's going to move the build plate down. So clock up, count down. So with a piece of paper underneath the nozzle head, we're going to slide it back until the nozzle is directly above that, um, that um, knob that we have, that are our leveling knob. So make sure the nozzle is above the leveling knob. You can kind of look at it like this and then look at it from the side in order to kind of see. And then we're going to feel the tension that is in between the two. And so what we're kind of looking for is if you were to take your piece of paper and put it on a flat surface, you are to put your finger on top of it and move it back and forth underneath your finger. You're looking for that kind of tension. So the tension shouldn't be too loose to where you don't feel anything off. And it also shouldn't be too hard that the paper buckles when you try and move. So we're looking for that sweet little medium spot in between. Okay, so I'm just, am I gonna turn, are we gonna turn just that one for now? Or are we gonna do like two at a time, like one on each corner? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna level just that one for now. And we're going to try and make the same amount of tension for each spot. And there's going to be three for this printer. There's going to be one here on the inside, and then there's going to be two on the outside. Okay. And so we'll level these individually, and then we'll kind of test the entire build plate and see if it feels like we want it to. So go ahead and try and feel the tension between the printer and the build surface. And if it feels like it's just too close or it's hard to push the paper, you're going to go clockwise to go, or excuse me, you're going to go counterclockwise to go down, and then you'd go clockwise to go up. So clock up, count down. So mine felt a little bit loose, so I'm going to go clockwise. And I'm happy with the resistance that I have, so I'm going to leave that at the spot it's at. And just let me know whenever you feel like you're comfortable with that spot on the printer, and then we'll move on to the next one. Okay, I think I'm probably pretty close now. All right. The next one that we're going to do is right here on the outside bottom corner. Okay. So position your nozzle just above that one, and then again, feel the same tension that you were looking for last time. We want to make it at the same setting so that it's an entirely flat surface. So mine's way too loose, and I can't feel any resistance, so I'm going to go clockwise to go up. All right. 
I think that's a good spot. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that one there. And usually I only kind of adjust it by quarter turns and until I feel that resistance and then depending upon how it feels, I'll either lower or higher. So we're just about to approach that hour mark, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stay with you until we get this printer working so that you can make sure to be able to do this also in your classroom and also help your students set this up so that you can use this very okay. quickly. Cool. My hands are too big, that's my problem. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good thing while well, you're going to train all of your students how to do this. Yeah, it's just like starting up a computer anymore. All these kids know how to, uh, they know how to get on the internet and go to Facebook and all that stuff. But as far as like really knowing how to work a computer, they, <laughs> they really don't know that much. It depends on which ones you come across. Some know a little too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And so leveling a build plate is something you get a lot more used to as you handle 3D printers more and more often. And some have auto leveling features, but we always feel like those don't quite work as well, simply because Either something can be slightly off, or the pin can be off, or the pressure that it applies might be wrong, and it can always create some sort of issue. So we like to use this kind of sheet of paper ideal and the manual leveling to make sure that we can train ourselves to be ready to level the build plane no matter what, and also to make sure that students can do it themselves. Once we have that leveling knob done, we're going to do the exact same thing to the one that's just behind it. So we would move the build, up, move the build plate forward, and then we do the same deal there. Wow, that one's way too tight. <laughs> so I'm going to go clockwise, counterclockwise to go down. Well, and I know when I set up my other one and I took it, uh, we figured out real quick that the countertop at my parents' house was not very level. Uh, <laughs> Luckily, that's something we don't have to worry about with these because these level with themselves. So that's what we're actually doing. We're actually leveling the build plate against the extruder head. So it doesn't matter what kind of surface it's on, it's going to be level and print well by itself. Build plate's much too low now. So just let me know whenever you're going to get finished leveling that guy. Uh, okay, I almost got it there. Yeah, sure thing. I 
It's got to be pretty close. I think I like it where it is here. Awesome. Sounds good then. All right, next part I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug the printer. So the reason Can I just I leave the, Go ahead. Can I leave the SD card in there? It doesn't hurt it if you just leave it in there when you unplug it. Doesn't hurt it at all. Okay. So the reason I did that is because I want you to feel familiar with unplugging the device if anything wrong is going on. And so one of the biggest issues that happens with 3D printers is that people will leave the printer on with a heated nozzle with filament inside it. And what that does is it causes the filament to turn into this really black carbon looking stuff and it becomes a clog in your nozzle head. So you won't be able to extrude anything and it won't push out. What you're gonna have to do is something called a soft bolt. And this is kind of moving into the filament issues that you can have during troubleshooting. And so to avoid that, what we do is we unplug it. So if it's done printing or a student was leveling it, and maybe they already had it heated and that kind of thing, and they just left it alone. Well, if it's heated and the nozzle isn't squirting anything out, it's going to become clogged. So you might want to always go by and kind of unplug the printers or make sure that they aren't heated. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and plug it back in. And now I'm going to do something called a preheat PLA. And so that's for actually unloading and loading filament. So I'm going to click on the button once. I'm going to click setup. And then I'm going to click preheat PLA. And we're going to level it once more. Now the reason that we're leveling it again is because in this case, what might happen is that because we test these printers vigorously here in the shop once we finish putting them together and everything, what we do is we run a test print. And that test print leaves sometimes a little bit plastic here on the hot nozzle. And in order to knock that plastic off, we have to heat up the nozzle and then level it and the paper should knock it off itself. And so this is to ensure that it is really leveled and then it should be good to print. So it's gonna heat up to 220 degrees Celsius. But the only part that is getting hot is going to be this little tiny piece right inside here. And so it's a little hard to see, but it's the piece that's really close to the build plate and that we just leveled against. That's the only part that gets hot, and it's the only part that is going to burn a student if they touch it. It is hard to get to, but it's not hard enough that it's out of their reach. <laughs> because pretty much everything is in their reach. Oh, yeah. That, they'll find their way if they want to get to it bad enough. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, so mine's just about heated up, so I'm going to go ahead and click Setup and Auto Home, just in case. Just to make sure that we're at zero on the Z-axis. And it's, I like auto homing all the time. It makes me feel better. And then I'm going to disable motors again so we can level the build plate once again. So I'm going to slide my paper underneath the extruder. And I'm going to kind of feel all around the build plate and make sure that I'm still happy with the tolerance that it has. And so for this one, it seems like, actually, it's pretty nice. Most of the time it feels like it's just a little bit too low. All right. So I should get a little bit of resistance out of the paper, right? Correct. You should have a little bit of resistance out of it.
So for the troubleshooting, we kind of touch bases on mechanical printer errors, leveling the build plate, and now we're going to kind of touch on the filament issues. So we're actually going to load filament, and then we'll also talk about something called the soft pull, which helps to make the plastic at a transition phase and pull out any extra plastic that may be in there. And then also trying to push plastic or the filament through the extruder in order to clear out clogs. So unloading and loading filament is a safe practice for your students or yourself to do in order to prevent clogs in any way. If a print is complete and you want to make sure that nothing's going to happen or maybe you're changing colors till later, you can always pull the filament out and make sure nothing kind of stays in there. But if you want to, the nozzle is always going to cool down when a print ends. So you don't have to necessarily pull the filament out, but it's safe practice in order to make sure it doesn't clog. Then the other type of filament that you can use to troubleshoot is going to be something called a soft pull. And what happens is the soft pull heats a nozzle from zero degrees, and then you're going to take, you're going to click, oops, select the option, soft pull, and it's going to heat up to 100 degrees Celsius. And when it's at 100 degrees Celsius, this type of filament actually becomes a transitional phase, and it actually fills in the size of the nozzle. And when it fills the nozzle, then when you pull it out, it should clear out everything that was stuck with it. And so if you feel like it is a clogged nozzle, which you should be able to tell if you can't force plastic through, it's probably a clog that you're experiencing. And so a soft pull, or even trying to push through the clog even more, can usually un undo the problem that you're having. And that's just a couple tips to use whenever you feel like the nozzle is blocked. Another tool that you have in your toolkit is your small little nozzle on clogger. And it's going to be this really tiny metal needle. And what this is used for is flossing the nozzle as necessary. And of course, you'd want to use your tools and you definitely want to use your pliers in order to floss the hot nozzle with this device. So to use that, you would heat up the nozzle, you would use pliers, and you would thread that in and out until you felt like the nozzle was clear. All right, and whenever you're ready, we'll actually go over loading the filament, and then we should be ready to print. Okay, let's let's give it a try and see what we can get in here. All right, sounds good. Okay, so the next part that we're going to do is we're going to load the filament. And so in order to do that, we kind of want to move the Z-axis up so our extruder is not right on our build plate. So I'm going to click once on the printer knob, and then I'm going to go to controls, and I'm going to click again, and then I'm going to select move axis at the bottom. Okay. I'm going to click that and select move one millimeter and then move Z. Okay, so you click 
the middle one move one millimeter. Yep. And then move Z after that. Move Z, okay. And then we're going to crank that out to just about 20 should work for us. Because we just want to be able to see that there is filament coming out of the extruder. And for safe practice, if there's any plastic already kind of coming out of there, of course we want to use pliers to remove that and get it out of the way. All right, so we moved our z-axis up and our nozzle is heated. So we are more than ready to place filament inside of our printer and prep it to print. All right, so I went ahead and rotated mine to the side here. And we're also going to need our small little shears in order to cut our plastic. Our shears are going to look like this right here. Okay, let's see. They're in with the USB cable, correct? Yes, they are. Okay, I got them. All right, and so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to clip this filament at an angle, kind of like that. And the reason for this is to make it come to a point which will make it easier to thread through our tube. So we're just going to spool out just a little bit of filament like that. And here in the back would be a pressure level with a spring. On the side of the screen, should be a hole just right next to our spiral axis. Okay, yeah, I see that little hole next to the little bar there, okay. Yep, yeah, sure. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna squeeze together the spring and then we're gonna thread the plastic through that hole until it goes into our tube. And we're gonna thread it all the way through our tube until we feel some resistance in that case, we should know that it's up against the nozzle. In order to check if it's against the nozzle, I'm gonna push a little bit extra plastic in, and then if I actually look at the printer, there should be spool of plastic coming out of our nozzle. So you said, so I'm going to push until I kind of feel a little bit of pressure towards it so I know that it's in there all the way? Yep. And then to ensure that it's in there all the way, you're going to take a look at the nozzle and see if extra plastic came out. So I'm going to keep feeding the plastic until I see something come out? Yes. Okay. And so it'll probably end up looking something like this, kind of just like a squirrely mess when it prints out of the nozzle like it is. Yep. Awesome. So that means we threaded the filament all the way through. So that is one way if you kind of push with that pressure that we did just now then that's a way to unclog, and that's also a way to purge the color that may have been in there before. Yeah, I got a nice green color to come out. <laughs> yep. All righty, so we went ahead and loaded the filament, and we know it's all the way through. We kind of purged the other color we had in there prior, and now the only thing we have to do is click print.
But as you remember, for the sake of this video, I'm going to go ahead and unplug my printer. And the reason I unplugged my printer in this case is because I don't want the filament to clog or become hard from overheating. And since we had the nozzle heated so we could load the filament, I went ahead and unplugged it to make sure we wouldn't have that issue. Sorry, I'm trying to find my other flashlight. My batteries went out. I can't see. <laughs> so once you get your load of it, filament loaded and everything, go ahead and unplug it so that we don't overheat it. And that's just overheating the filament that's already in there. So when I get ready to unplug it, I don't have to tell it to cool down or anything like that. I just unplug it. Yep. You don't have to do anything. You just have to unplug it. And that's a good way to prevent those kind of issues. So like if you are worried about filament baking inside of the printer, then what you want to do is just go over to the printer and unplug it. Now it only bakes if the printer is on and the extruder is hot and there is filament in it. All right, so now that it's so once I got the filament, I see something coming through. I'm going to go ahead and just unplug it. Yep, go ahead and unplug it. And then right. to reiterate that it's our fail safe and it keeps us from having those filament issues that I talked about earlier. Okay, well, that's probably good too. We're having a little bit of a storm, a little bit of lightning going on down here now. Yeah, so actually, if your power does go out or something in the case that this printer is working and it kind of shuts off the power and the printer reboots, it's just going to stop and not do anything. And it should cool off just by sitting there. Uh, so you shouldn't have to worry about that in any case, but you will have to restart your print. Okay, that's good to know. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're ready to finally print. We got our filament loaded, we leveled our bed. We know that we don't have any mechanical errors. And then the only other troubleshooting thing that we could think of would be Kira. And since we went over those just a little while ago, we went over all of our Cura settings and made sure it's right for our printer, we should be ready to print. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug the printer in. We're gonna click once on the button, and then we're gonna scroll down to print from SD. And then we're gonna select our six-sided dice. So plug it in, then we're going to click once, print from SD, and then select our six-sided dice. Print from SD, six-sided dice, okay. And then it's going to kind of bring us to our status screen or the home screen here. And what it's going to say in the bottom left, right. go ahead. Well, it, it automatically goes back to like that status screen on its own if you just let it sit there for a yes, minute. Yes, it will. Okay. It'll go back to that home screen every time. So what the home screen kind of tells us is it tells us what it's doing. So here in this case, it says heating. 
And what it means by that is up here in the top right hand corner of the window, it says 220 and it says some value under the nozzle. The value under the nozzle is the current temperature it's at. The value above the nozzle is what it wants to go to. Then we're also going to have X, Y, and Z on this screen. And what that means is it's going to tell us where it is on the X, where it is on the Y, and where it is on the Z axis, depending upon where it's printed. So mine just says heating done, and now it's moving to our home position for zero, 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 and then it should start my print. So it's being a little stringy, so I'm gonna go ahead and take my pliers and I'm gonna take that extra plastic that kind of strung off, pull it away. So did it start printing for you? Or is it still heating? It's still, it's still heating up for a second. All right. All right, so mine is starting to print, and it seems like everything is level, and it's looking pretty good. So hopefully yours comes out in the same way, and we should be good to go. Now, if I see it's it's not level, then I'm just going to twist the knobs at the bottom like we did until I get it where it's level? Correct. But hot leveling is a little bit more difficult. So what I mean by hot leveling is you can level it while it is printing, but it is a little bit difficult to get that perfect tolerance for the plastic. So if I ever want to level it and get a little more precise, I always just want to unplug it. Right, and use your piece of paper. Uh-huh. Uh, did I un okay, and now it is... Okay. Okay, I must have put it under one of the things. So I did the uh, dice, is it under STL files or? It depends on the one you saved it to. Okay. Let's I don't know which one it is. There's, I have one under uh, I have one under STL files and one under test prints. Does it matter which one? I would say it's the one under STL files is where it's saved. Uh, okay. That's what was throwing me off. I kept going back because I was trying to decide which one is it. <laughs> yeah, it was probably in the STL files because we opened one of the files inside that folder and then it probably saved right back to that. Okay, now it, it will always save to that folder, correct? You can make you can it on select, something different? Yes, yeah, so you can select whatever folder you would like as long as you go file and then down to save G code and it should let you do that. Okay. And if you want me to show you that, I can. I'm just waiting on it to finish. Heating up here, it's almost there. And see what happens here. So kind of the things we went over today, we went the process of printing, and we had four steps of that process, which the first one was design or make, and we kind of went over Tinkercad and on sheet. And then we had the slicing or G-code transfer. So we took an STL file for making it, Changed it to a G code in Kira with all of our settings. And then we transferred it to the printer and then we selected it to print. 
And then we kind of touch base on some troubleshooting things that we can do. So the first thing you really want to check is always your Kira settings to make sure they're right. Then you're going to want to go over a little bit of printer inspection and the manual kind of work. Leveling the build plate is a big technique that always helps. And then also, if you feel like your extruder is clogged, then you can try some filament issues, which would be pushing filament through in order to unclog it or attempting a soft pull, which is also where preheat, PLA, and auto home is located. All right, now let's see what happens here. Let's start that. Sounds like it started for you. Yeah, now let me ask you, because I'm getting this. It's just all like jumbling up on top of each other. So if it's jumbling on kinda... top of each other, what that is is a leveling build plate issue. And what it means is that the build plate is too far away for the plastic to adhere to. So maybe okay. Close, but... Is there a way to just, can you just like pause to print or would you have to completely stop it and start it over? So since you already kind of had that issue here at the start, I would probably recommend stopping the build and then restarting it once you have it. So if you click on the button once and you click stop print. Okay. If you click the button and then scroll down to stop print, It'll stop the printer from moving, and then go ahead and click Setup in Auto Home. All right, let's see. So I'm gonna say stop. now one thing. One thing that happens when you stop a print is it does not cool down the nozzle. And so if you want the nozzle to cool down while you're waiting or trying to level it, the best way would be to unplug the printer. Okay. But since we're going to do a pretty quick level, then we shouldn't have to unplug it. But if you would like to be in safety terms, you can do so. So I'm going to pull up all of the plastic it already put down for me, and we'll go over the leveling process again. It doesn't look like it's too far off. It's It's got to be pretty close. It's not far off. Yeah, usually it's just like barely away from it, and it's always something that you're like, well, if I had only twisted it one quarter more of a turn, then it would have been good. And that's how <laughs> particularly these printers can be. So kind of use your paper to put it under the nozzle again. Remember, you're going to have to disable motors in order to move the build plate and stuff around. And remember, it's clock up, count down. Yeah, that took me a while to remember that with my other printer. I would always go the opposite direction, and I'm like, ah, I messed it up worse. And then it was because I turned it the wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's why I came up with the thing clock up, count down, because I kept doing the exact same thing. Well, that's a good idea. And so it kind of helps you remember that, and you, there's not much to it, so... All right, cool. Mine feels a little bit more level, too. And then you just select print from SD again, and then click on your dice one more time, and it should immediately start printing again. But another thing kind of to remember is if you do click stop print, it's not going to... Um, turn off the nozzle. If the nozzle will stay heated if you click stop print or pause print, it'll stay heated. 
Okay, and you said whenever I get done printing something and I unplug it and it cools down, before it cools down, do I always want to pull the filament all the way back out? You do not have or to. Or is it okay to? Yeah, you can leave it in there. So like if, if, it, if it finishes a print and it pulls off to the side after it finishes the print, what's going to happen is the printer will stay on, but the nozzle will cool off. When a print finishes, the nozzle cools off. So you don't even have to remove the filament at that point. If you would okay. like to, you can, and it's probably safe practice to teach your kids that whenever a print finishes and they're around it, that they should pull the filament out. And okay. that's to help, um, you know, keep from having any filament issues. Well, I know I want to try one of the first things I saw somebody had made on, uh, on the Thingiverse website. And, yeah. uh, I saw some file where, because along with STEM, I teach a fifth grade math class, and it's uh, uh, they made a little file where it, it just made some circles with some numbers, and then like abstract, multiply, divide, and Plus equals, like and manipulatives. exactly, and they put like a PVC pipe through the middle of it, and so it's almost like little rings, and they fit on the PVC pipe, and so they oh, could sit there and cool. spin them in circles and like work on their math facts like if they're just sitting around somewhere that's really cool that's a cool idea i like that awesome uh, so did it start printing for you yeah it uh i might be a little bit low maybe kind of on this back right corner but like i said it looks pretty darn close though so yeah as long as it's not creating spaghetti again then it should be close nah not not this time now let me ask you if it uh like let me see if i can show it to you yeah like at the beginning of it you see how it made like that uh See how like that string standing up right there? Yeah. Where the nozzle head started out at? Right. Okay, what does that mean it's too close or what no, causes so that, that? That big string that it ended up making, what it was doing was purging the nozzle and building up nozzle pressure so that it can print correctly. So that is a good thing for it to do. That whenever it touches down on the build plate and comes up with a string, it's supposed to do that. Yeah. Okay, good. So it builds up nozzle pressure and makes sure to kind of like purge any other colors you may have had out if you change filament just a little bit. Okay. And I guess the now this number, like it says four minutes, is that that's not for this particular print. It's keeping like a my time log. Right. That's an elapsed time from the moment you hit print from SD and selected the file. That's how long. It's been, it's been four minutes since then, yeah. Okay. Now, where are you guys located? Are you in Fayetteville or yes, Conway? We're actually in hey. Fayetteville, Arkansas, right on College Avenue. Okay. Do uh, you, you guys uh, ever hire new employees or anything? We do. We're kind of going through a transition phase, kind of where we're working into that. Okay. Uh, for job opportunities like that, do we? I guess you guys post them on your website, or how could you find out about those if you we want do. to? We do. We post them on our website, or we may post them on Facebook or LinkedIn sites. Okay, what uh, if I join your Facebook page? Is it just NWA 3D? Yes, it is just NWA 3D, and that's the same thing for like Instagram and Twitter, just with that. Okay, cool. So, did it get up printing and running? Uh, it did. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording here. Okay.